very good evening friends right sir that means two class we have devoted <coughs> for the lesser known areas in geography for mains examination again for your kind reference just bringing in front of you the syllabus what is given in this examination sir as you know the three paragraphs of syllabus is there for geography among the three paragraphs almost two paragraphs we have already completed in the earlier classes that is one salient features of world physical geography right it is almost completed if not assume it is completed sir right about some of the very important geographical phenomena such as earthquake tsunami volcanic activity cyclones etc right explicitly mentioned four topics we have done it in the class etc also we have a justification right at least we have an idea while doing about the disaster management disaster and disaster management of those natural hazards which has the potential to change the landform feature we have seen if that is the case one para what we may concentrate on these two days it means two days of geography will be these areas sir that is distribution of key natural resources across the world and very importantly including south asia and indian subcontinent and very importantly the number of questions if i talk about the number of questions which is being asked recurrently it is the second <laughs> sentence of this paragraph sir factors responsible for the location of primary secondary and tertiary sector industries in various part of the world and what is very important for us is this including india see completing all the topics here is not at all possible so what we'll do we have just analyzed the past year's question paper and the questions almost we find that almost <coughs> similar type of questions are being asked if that is the case when i talk about the industrial location most of the questions are from those industrial locations of india sir right if that is the case we'll talk about those industries or industrial locations of india before talking about the industrial location of india as we always do let us understand what exactly the demand of the question maybe this sentence we'll try to complete in this class key distribution of natural resources across the world but very importantly in india maybe the next class we'll be seeing some of those natural resources right sir now when i talk about this sentence if i understand the syllabus first certainly you will agree that no question in upsc is out of syllabus because always there is one word called as etc to include all those out of syllabus questions right sir but still when i talk about this paragraph luckily speaking i don't have any etc right that is the case let me understand the syllabus first it says factors responsible for the location it means i am talking about the factors which is responsible for location alone right problems of those industries right other aspect of that industry is not so important for us maybe we also at least in the past when i talk about the past we also had instances asking the problems associated with that industry but core or the focus area of the question is majorly revolving around this area called as location locational aspect of industries as such what are the different factors which determine the locational aspect of industry now proceeding further sir it says primary secondary and tertiary sector industries now let me understand the second line or second degree of understanding says yes secondary sector industry i can understand what is the secondary sector industry i call it as manufacturing industries tertiary sector industries service sector industry but what is this primary sector industry is it agriculture is agriculture a that is the question certainly speaking only the secondary sector we have a convention of calling it as a industry right agriculture we don't call it as a industry because industry the word industry itself belongs to the secondary sector if that is the case what i understand or it means if my understanding is right we have also confirmed with the previous year's question what they are trying to ask is about those industries which is based on agricultural product or i put it this way this industry is nothing but agro based industries sir it's agro based industries right agriculture is a very broad area agriculture is a very broad area if that is the case certainly speaking dairy can also be brought up right sir 
even we call it as a pastoral based industries that can also be brought in to some extent but again all industries or all agro based industries we are not considering see what is actually a secondary sector right it means you have some processed or unprocessed product as an input finished goods you get it as an output right sir if that is the case this raw material for the secondary sector can be the output of agriculture itself that i call it as agro based industries if my decoding is right certainly speaking it means when i talk about the previous years questions questions were, were from this agro based industries so analysis of the says it is not about location of agricultural practice where what crop is not the decoding what we are doing we are just talking about the agro based industries and the location of it for example cotton textiles for examples talk about the jute industries or let me call it as sugar industries right all these even when i talk about the paper industries these are some of the agro based industries what we have right understanding says it means this primary sector industry is nothing but the agro based industries otherwise word primary and industries do not go hand in hand that's the reason we always say it is kind of an oxymoron hope you understand what is this oxymoron examples are not repeated again right sir right now what we'll do we will talk about some of the locational aspect of so called agro based industry and mineral based industries let me call it as a secondary industry and when i talk about tourism and sorry when i talk about tertiary sector and the locational based industries primarily the industry what we have to concentrate maybe with of tourism right sir and few other service oriented industries we can take it right sir these are some of the areas what we'll be seeing now before talking about the individual element or industry specific locational aspect what we'll do we'll understand in general what determines the locational aspect of industries in general then we'll take up the individual issues right sir right the entire sentence let me call it as industrial location sir which itself i'm just bringing into three topics or three types of industries what i call it as agro based industries metallurgy industries and the service sector industries say like example tourism these are some of the areas what we'll be concentrating sir now when i talk about the, the factors which influence the location of an industry there are n number of factors n number of factors one by one we'll understand any type of industries which is asked these points are repeated right leaving out those points which is irrelevant to that particular type of industry right sir what are they we'll see i said n number of factors are there primarily we are just classifying these factors into two categories sir what is very important is geographical factors it means <coughs> geographical factors and all those things which is not geography let me call it as non geographic factors right sir one by one we'll see it means approximately i have just given eight always ninth element is also there i have forgot to mention right these are some of the factors which influence the locational aspect of industries as such last row is this line clear sir can you see this okay right now i talk about the geographical factors some of those factors which determine the location of industries one let me call it as raw material the primary factor which determines the locational aspect of industry we will understand one by one number two the access to the market transport facility supply of power entire india should not have any industries then labor available of cheap labor not only cheap but also skilled availability of water location as such the cost of land what i call it as a site and especially speaking climate these are some of the factors which determine the locational aspect or geographical factors in deciding the location of a particular industry 
But I repeated the raw material, market, transport, power, labor, water, site and climate. Now similarly when I talk about the, the non-geographical factors, first and foremost I talk about the availability of capital, investment. Certainly speaking government policies, third what we call it as industri industrial inertia or sometimes it is also called as geographical inertia. Banking facilities, insurance, etc. as the safeguards. These are some of the non-geographical factors which determine the locational aspect of industries. Now one by one we will understand. One by one we will understand. Now first and foremost I said raw materials. I said raw material. Any industry need a raw material, sir. No denial about it. But just to tell you that there are two types of raw material, primarily speaking. One type of raw material, let me call it as if at all. If I talk about a raw material, one thing, I call it as a pure raw material, sir. One, I call it as a pure raw material, or I produce with three categories, let me take it. One, I call it as a pure raw material. The second, let me call it as a weight gaining material. And third category, it is a weight losing raw material. So, pure raw material, weight gaining raw material and weight losing raw material. Now what are they will understand? For example, whenever I talk about a process, whenever I talk about what exactly the secondary sector is involved in, it has input as a raw material. This raw material is taken from a place where it is available, sir. It means from the place of raw material it is collected, it is brought to the place where it is being processed, that I call it as industry and the place where this industry is located, that is all about our discussion. And post delivery of the product, this product has to reach the market. Right there. This is the linear sequence of any product. It starts from a raw material. It means any product, when I talk about finally, it reaches a market. But I understand there is always a distance between the place where you get a raw material. From that place, it goes to the industry where it is being processed. And finally, it will be reaching the market as such. If that is the case, whenever I have some raw material, Right, say for example, I am talking about some 100 grams of raw material, very crude example. Right, 100 grams of raw material is there. I am processing it. Right, sir. During the event of processing, this raw material neither gains weight nor loses weight. The same finished group product, the weight of the finished group product is also the same. If that is the case, raw material is 100 grams, finished group goods is 100 grams. Right, sir. Such type of raw material, we call it as a pure raw material. We call it as a pure raw material. Right, sir, we do have pure raw material. Right. Now, what is very, very common, these materials will be either weight gaining or weight losing. Now, what is this weight gaining raw material? Every attempt of process or every stage of process, the weight of raw material will be increased. It means, along with this raw material, any other material will be added for the purpose of process. If that is the case, say n number of raw materials I have, if at all, if I start the processing at n number of stages, end product will be, weight of that end product will be very, very high. Those type of raw material, we call it as a weight gaining raw material. The opposite of it, sir. I have some raw material, every attempt of the process, if at all, if the weight of the raw material is lost, I call it as a weight gaining raw material. Right, sir. These are the three types of raw material and these are the three types of raw material which decides the locational aspect of the industries primarily, sir. For example, one, let me talk about 
कॉटन जर और कॉटन टेक्सटाइल टॉक अबाउट कॉटन टेक्सटाइल ऑलवेज अ इंडस्ट्री इज लोकेटेड बिटवीन द प्लेस वेर यू गेट अ रॉ मटीरियल एंड अ प्लेस वेर दिस फिनिश्ड गुड्स इज ऑलरेडी मीन्स ऑलमोस्ट इट इज सोल्ड लेट मी कॉल इट एज मार्केट When I talk about the location of any industries, the industry is always located between raw material and the market as such. Right, sir. Imagine, I am talking about a pure raw material which neither loses its weight nor gains its weight. Imagine that it is a linear position, sir. Almost connected by a rail route or train route, sir. Whatever it is. Right. Where exactly you can have the locational aspect of industry? Any places throughout. this linear route you can have because transportation cost is not going to make much difference if that is the case when i talk about a pure raw material like cotton you can have cotton textile near the raw material centers or you can have cotton textiles near the market centers or you can have anywhere near your native also you can have sir right now anywhere you can have the locational aspect of cotton centers for a simple reason cotton textile is an example of pure raw material it neither gains weight nor loses a weight one more example if at all if i'm just taking it between raw material and market imagine that this raw material the raw material what i have right sir at every stage it gains weight if that is the case where is the preferable location of this industry suddenly speaking this will be near the market see before that one thing should also i should understand whenever i talk about the cost of production there are n number of factors which determine the cost of production but primarily right it is the cost means i put it this way it means uh, the extraction cost of raw material labor and very importantly i also have this uh, factor cost what i call it as a transportation more is the transportation certainly speaking the cost of the product also increases so when i talk about the locational aspect of industries this locational aspect of industries primarily worked on minimum cost ratio if that is the case wherever you have the minimum transport along with the other factors exactly there it is located sir if that is the case when i talk about weight gaining suddenly speaking you will be having weight gaining industries located near the market right similarly when i talk about weight losing industries near the raw material where you get the raw material there itself you process right once the finished goods is almost a factor of the weight what you have with the raw material right the transportation cost becomes very very easy If that is the case primarily speaking when i talk about the location location is primarily decided based on the transportation cost right sir now with this idea let me conclude when i talk about the industries based on raw material yes raw material is of three types but when i talk about industries based on raw material i have two types of industries one we call it as as the name itself suggest weight gaining industry and weight losing industries or can i use some other words weight gaining industry can i say weight gaining industries can be sometimes called as market oriented industries it will be located very near to the market that can also be noted so this weight gaining industries is sometimes called as market oriented industries if that is the case what is the name we can associate with this weight losing industry you can call it as raw material oriented industry so based on raw material along with the market access we can divide industries into two broad categories what we call it as a weight gaining industry or market oriented industries the second you call it as weight losing industries and 
और रॉ मटेरियल ओरिएंटेड इंडस्ट्री सर टू टाइप्स ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज वी हैव वी आल्सो हैव अ थर्ड टाइप सर विल सी व्हाट इज दिस थर्ड टाइप व्हेन आई टॉक अबाउट द फ्यू प्रोडक्ट्स बीट द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट ऑफ रॉ मटेरियल और द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट ऑफ the finished product both almost have a very minimum cost or i put it this way when i talk about the cost of the product transportation cost is almost negligible if that is the case where exactly the locational aspect of this means this industries can be located anywhere anywhere such industries which is neither based on raw material nor based on market we call it as foot loose industries sir any industries which is neither raw material oriented or or nor market oriented is called as foot loose industries let me repeat it any industries or any industry which is neither market oriented nor raw material oriented nor raw material oriented is called as foot loose industry any example sir pharmaceutical finest example pharmaceutical pharmaceutical chip manufacturing companies these are some of the examples Right, sir. We have just justified based on raw material where exactly industries will be located. Not only raw material, along with the raw material, we have also talked about the market access where the product will be sold. Right. Indirectly, we also talked about the transportation cost. Transportation cost should be very very minimum. Right, sir. Taking one step further. Imagine now I am talking about one type of industries which which almost needs more than one raw material. Say I need raw material one, raw material two. Imagine raw material one is available here, raw material two is available here, market is available here. If that is the case, right? I am talking about the industrial location where raw material one is available somewhere here. raw material 2 is available somewhere here and market is available somewhere here right if that is the case where exactly you can have the industrial location anywhere within this triangle but still to justify if at all if you can compute the best transportation cost you can select a center point such that such that you have effective transportation cost say this is the industry this is the transportation where you have for raw material 1 and transportation for raw material 2 and certainly speaking this is the transportation cost what you spent on market similarly when i talk about the same different raw material for market oriented industries the industrial location will be somewhere here this we call it as a locational triangle of industries if at all if you are going for more than one raw material we are striking or we are calculating a place such that where the transportation cost will be minimum again this type of industries i note that industries this industries is very close to raw material given the case it is a raw material oriented industry where the second type is a market oriented industry now finest example when i talk about iron and steel industry in india sir iron and steel industry in india when i talk about the locational aspect of iron and steel industry in india wherever when i talk about iron and steel industry the requirement for example when i talk about the raw material for iron and steel industries two very important raw material is there one you need iron ore apart from iron ore you need one more raw material what is this raw material you need coal right sir wherever you have only iron ore you may not have iron and steel industry wherever only you have coal you may not have iron and steel industry again but where exactly you have wherever you have both iron and steel industries and the coal field of the india coal field of india is located near to each other there we have such industries 
That is the reason why iron and steel industries are concentrated in few states like Jharkhand, Orissa, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, etc. Right, sir. Where very near you have coal reserves and you also have Chotanagpur Plateau, which is known for its iron ore reserves. Right, sir. Right. So three factors we have justified, and the fourth factor. Availability of cheap power. Right, sir. But one advantage of power is there power can also be transmitted via a long distance, or it means at least to a long distance, also power can be almost transported. But still, what we are looking is for cheap and very important uninterrupted power. Right, sir. The fourth cost or fourth factor I am talking about labor. See, when I talk about labor, it is not only the number of availability of labor, number of layers, labors is needed, no denial about it, but more than that, what you need is skilled labor. Problem of India is not with the number of labors, it is with the skilled labors. Every company which comes for campus interview, almost it has an objective to take 100 students, right sir, but the skilled students for the clerical job in software company is very very less for administrative service it is more right sir now finally i mean sorry apart from labor we also have the need of water sir abundant availability of water along with it let me call it as also site what is the site cost of land And finally, whenever I talk about the many footloose industries of the world, where raw material or the market is not deciding what exactly is deciding the location is this eighth factor called as a climate, sir. Finest example, when I talk about Bengaluru, right, one pull factor for the industrial location is this climate. Right, sir. These are some of the geographical factors which determines the locational aspect of industries. Now, some of the non-geographical factors, sir. One I call it as capital investment. See, whenever I talk about the growth of industrial sectors, industrial sectors very easily grow where already you have the developed areas for the simple reason the infusion of capital is very very easy already you have the availability of capital or the investment as such right sir if that is the case the multiplier effect is very very easy right sir apart from that certainly speaking you have government policies for example if at all naturally if no if for example a place is not experiencing that natural or geographical advantage of the location right government through its policies can almost bring in some impetus for the growth right some of the finest example when i talk about industrial parks when i talk about SEZs, these are some of the government initiatives which is almost bringing those industrial location so with an objective that bringing this industrial location will actually benefit the region in a longer run what we call it as a spillover effect or a trickle down effect. Right, sir. Examples, if you want to take it, you can call it as industrial park or even the finest example. What is working very beautifully is SEZs. The third factor, sir, inertia. Sometimes also called as industrial inertia or geographical inertia. Few places we find that one type of industries is concentrated, but nobody knows what is the reason. For example, when I talk about Aligarh locks or when I talk about the textile industries in Coimbatore, right, sir. Even when I talk about the textile industries in industry in Mumbai as such, when I talk about the exact reason why exactly when I talk about the rate of growth or the size of these industries, they are very, very huge. But when I talk about the geographical location, seldom I find any geographical location. So what we find in the sense, this is because of this industrial inertia. What is this industrial inertia? Maybe this is the place where first such industries has come. Over a period of time, this one industry has grown into many. 
for that later we will understand when I talk about the cotton textile as such, the very first successful industry came in Mumbai. Right. Outgrowth of these industries has led to the construction of many other industries. Right. That initial impetus, you call it as a industrial inertia. Sometimes also called as geographical inertia. And finally, banking facility. Yes or no, we will believe it. Right, sir. These are some of the factors which influence the locational aspect of industries. And let me repeat again. We are just taking two factors. One is geographical factors and non-geographical factors. Now, the crux is very simple. Any type of industries, what we are going to see next will be based on these factors as such. Right, sir. Proceeding further. Now, when I talk about the types of industries, sir, when I talk about the types of industries, there are many different classification of industries. But whatever we will be seeing now, it comes under under these classifications. Right. When I talk about the types of industries or classifying industries, first based on labor and capital, the number of people working and the investment as such. Industries can be classified into four groups, sir. What you call as a large scale, medium scale, small scale, and micro scales. Right, sir. Whenever I talk about micro scale industries, certainly speaking, that investment level also, you know, what is the investment level? If that is the case for a simple reason, you can divide this into two categories, sir. One for industries, manufacturing industries, and the service sectors. What is the criteria for almost declaring this as a micro scale or micro industry? Investment should be less than 25 lakhs. If industry means investment is less than 25 lakhs, you call it as a micro industries. For service sectors, it is still 10 lakhs. When I talk about small scale industries, 25 lakhs to 5 crores, if I am not wrong. Manufacturing, you call it as a small scale. The same service sector, it is for 2 crores. When I talk about medium scale, it is 5 crore to 10 crore in medium scale. And when I talk about service sector, it is 5 crores, sir. More than this, you call it as a large scale industries. This is according to MSME Act 2006, sir. This is the classification and reading current affairs, you also know that there is a recent proposal cabinet has approved a own proposal. What is the proposal? It has not come into an act, but it is only a proposal. If parliament passes it, it becomes an act. Just to add one point to it, what is the new proposal? It is not based on investment, it is based on the turnover. Right, sir. Annual turnover, if at all, if it is up to 5 crores, sir, you call it as a micro, right, 5 crores to 75 crores, if I am not wrong again, you call it as a medium, 75 crores to 250 crores of annual turnover, you call it as a, sorry, small, and up to 250, you call it as a, medium. This is the new classification which is approved by cabinet. It is not based on investment, now it is based on turnover. Up to 5 crores and there is no difference. Now there is no difference exists between manufacturing and service sector. Only one type of classification is given. Right, sir. Based on source of raw material, source of raw material, we divide industries into three or four categories, at least three categories I am just bringing in. Right. One, if at all, if this raw material is the output or the product of agriculture, you call it as agro-based industries, only farm outputs. Right. If at all, if it is mineral-based, you call it as mineral-based raw material or mineral-based industries. And if at all, if it is uh, the animal inputs, right, we call it as pastoral based. Leather industries, wool industries, dairy industries, these are pastoral based industries.
Similarly, when I talk about the raw material or finished goods, the weight, the size, right? If at all, if the size is too large, you call it as heavy industries. If it is less in weight, the finished product, you call it as light industries. And finally, when I talk about ownership, sir, different types of ownership are there. Private sector, you know what is private sector, public sector. The government holding should be majority, you call it as a public sector. Joint sector, both the private and the public coming together. Cooperatives, nobody knows who is the owner, nobody knows who is the user. We call it as cooperatives. MNCs also, you know what is MNC. Multinational companies. These are industries based on the ownership, sir. Proceeding further, shall I? One by one, we'll start, sir. We'll start with some of the agro based industries. Two or three agro based industries will complete, then we'll go for other <laughs> industries. First, to start with, I'm just starting with the cotton textile industries, sir. Some basic introduction facts about cotton textile industries and the location what are the factors which determine the location now some of the basic facts about the cotton textile industry particularly in india some of the basic facts sir. when i talk about the first modern cotton textile mill it was almost set up in a place called as a fort glaster near kolkata sir in the year 1818 almost 200 years of cotton we had in india and in modern lines And in 1854, just to tell you, when I talk about this 1818 that was set in Calcutta, it is a very short-lived. It was not almost successful, very means. After its installation, it was closed in no time, sir. But when I talk about the very first successful cotton textile industry in India, the very successful cotton textile industry in India, it started in Mumbai, sir. In the year 1854, and it was almost brought in by a person called as Deaver. And this is the reason I said this is the reason which has almost implemented or it has multiplied its what I call it as industrial inertia. Today, Mumbai is called as Cottonopolis of India. For the simple reason, when I talk about the concentrated cotton textile in India, it is rather it is Mumbai. It is Mumbai, sir. The reason for it is this inertial or industrial inertia what is created by the setting up of this industry way back in 1854. To add a few points, when I talk about other cotton industries which was set up during the earlier times, one in 1861, we have Shapur Mills which was set up in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Same Ahmedabad, there is also another mill which was set, it is called as Kaliko. 1863, this mill was also set in Ahmedabad. Now, when I talk about the present position of cotton textile industry, some of the basic facts say the cotton textile industry is the largest organized modern industry in India. And according to the fact, it says approximately somewhere around, exact figure you leave it, sir, approximately somewhere around 2000 textile mills are there in India, sir which almost employs more than 2.5 crore people. Right, sir. Somewhere around 2000 <coughs> mills we have. And when I talk about the production house of this uh, cotton textile industries, almost three types of production house we have. One, we call it as a mill culture. Large industrial setup, you call it as a mill culture. Right. Similarly, you also have power loom and hand loom.
Now, when I talk about the milk culture, what we identified that this milk culture was very, very prevalent during the earlier days. But at time of freedom, whenever I talk about the, almost at the time of partition of freedom, somewhere this mill was accounting for 81 percentage of the total production, sir. But today, when I talk about, sorry, today, when I talk about the mill production or the mill capacity, what we have among the entire production. Today we have only 5% of total production which is contributed by mill. That is the case almost from first 5 year plan or almost near the time of freedom we have 81% which has almost declined to 5% today sir. What has taken the space of mill is this power loom. Slowly steadily when I talk about today's production majority is almost contributed by power loom. As a fact, somewhere around 62 percentage of total cloth production today, it is accounted by power loom. And the rest is by hand loom, sir. factor which is very important for us it means when I talk about the demand of the syllabus it is all about the locational factor of if at all if they ask they ask about the cotton industries now whenever I talk about cotton industrial locations sir, this is how the cotton textile industries in India look like today right sir if that is the case easily I can remember any name given is a location of cotton industry in India that is how I can remember Almost this is one industry which is highly decentralized. Right, sir. But when I talk about the very important hubs, very important hubs, they are very few. Very few. For example, when I talk about cotton industries, one I find that almost Gujarat and Maharashtra, it is concentrated. Right. Apart from Gujarat and Maharashtra, the hinterland of Coimbatore is concentrated. Right, sir. Apart from that, we have a few places of Uttar Pradesh, Kanpur and, and Shah Jahan. These are the two places what we have in Uttar Pradesh. And finally, we have that along Kolkata belt. Right, sir, these are the four places where you have the concentrated cotton textile industries of, the, of India. Almost all direction, north, south, east and west, one each we have. Right, sir, Mumbai belt we have, Gujarat and Mumbai. Or Maharashtra, Gujarat and Maharashtra, right, which is almost completely maximum majority of textile production in India accounts from this particular region. Apart from that, we also have Coimbatore, which is otherwise called as Manchester of the South. We have few location, important location in Uttar Pradesh, and finally, you are there in West Bengal. These are some of the very important cotton <coughs> textile industrial locations of India. One by one, we'll take it. The, all the names, we'll just repeat it, sir. Now, whenever I talk about the locational factor, one thing I understand, sir. 80 percentage of this industry is coterminous with the cotton growing track of this country. For that, I should know which part of country is conducive for cotton cultivation. When I talk about the geographical factor for cotton cultivation, more than the humidity comes the soil factor, sir. What type of soil is conducive for cotton cultivation? It is black soil, sir. Where you find the black soil? Right. Wherever I have lava plateau, the structural soil is black soil. If that is the case, this black soil is coterminous with the region what I call it as Deccan Trap. So, wherever I have Deccan Trap, wherever I have Deccan Trap, these are the region where I will be having this cotton growing areas. And we say that 80 percentage of industries is coterminous with the cotton producing area and its hinterland. Right, sir. All that area which the influence can spread, you call it as hinterland. 
Right, sir, if that is the case, wherever I have this black soil, where all I have black soil, one state goes synonym with it, that is Maharashtra. Apart from Maharashtra, Gujarat. Apart from Gujarat, northern parts of Karnataka, parts of Madhya Pradesh and southern parts of Rajasthan. These are the places where I have the black soil belt of India. Black soil is very conducive, but apart from black soil also, we have other cotton growing states. Right, but understandably, when I talk about 80 percentage, right sir, almost near complete industrial location is located in this particular track. Where exactly you are there in Gujarat and Maharashtra also extending itself into Madhya Pradesh. Now some of the very important locations where you have such industries, if you are there in Gujarat, you have Ahmedabad, Solapur, Maharashtra, Nagpur, again you are there in eastern Maharashtra, Coimbatore, Indore, Madhya Pradesh, these are large scale cotton cultivation centers. All those industries which is located here in this locations. Ahmedabad, Solapur, Nagpur, Kaimbatur, they are mostly, they are located near the cotton cultivation center. If that is the case, can I say, these industries are more of raw material orient oriented industry. And one thing we, we should remember, cotton, what type of raw material is cotton? Cotton is a pure raw material. Anywhere this industry can be located between the place where cotton is grown and the place where the finished product is sold. Right, sir. Anywhere between the raw material place and the market, the industries can be located logically. But still, when we talk about the, the location, two places very, very common. Either we also have many industries very near to the cotton growing belt, or when I talk about places like Mumbai, they are very close to the market as such. Right, sir. Both the types of industries are there. When I talk about Mumbai, Mumbai, Mumbai is more of market oriented. Others, they are of raw material oriented. Then just justifying that what is this pure raw material just to tell you that there is not much difference between the cost of transportation of raw cotton and the finished clothes. So normally it is located at such center which have favorable transport facilities sir. That can also be added. So if at all if I talk about a locational aspect certainly said anywhere you can have its industrial location but at least to have one facilitating factor it should be well connected. If that is the case either you go for good road connectivity or you go for good rail connectivity. For export purpose, you can also prefer port connectivity. It is also port oriented sir. That is export oriented location we have in Mumbai. And about places like Solapur, you are there in Maharashtra, Nagpur, Maharashtra, even Indore, Madhya Pradesh, Ahmedabad, Surat, Udodra, Rajkot etc. These are the places where you have industries along the cotton growing, growing track or let me call it as these are the industries which is located in Black soil belt of India. Right, sir. Apart from that, we have two names in Uttar Pradesh. Just to tell you, one Kanpur you have, and Shah Jawan is another place where you have this very important location in Uttar Pradesh. Kanpur and Sajaban. 
almost you are there in eastern Uttar Pradesh, you have location called as Sajawan. If you are there in West Bengal, we have two locations. One is market oriented and port oriented Kolkata. And the second place, Murshidabad. Murshidabad, these are the two locations what you have in West Bengal, sir. Apart from that, you also have the Manchester of the South, Coimbatore. Right, sir. Now, when I talk about the distribution, the same names what we have taken it will also assess why exactly it has facilitated Maharashtra and so on. When I talk about Maharashtra, the concentration Maharashtra, one we know that Mumbai, as I said, it is called as Patanopolis of India. Right. Other geographical factor which has determined the locational aspect of Mumbai, let us understand, sir. One, climate, sir. Now, when I talk about climate, what cotton needs is a humid climate. Dry conditions cotton or generally the quality of cotton will not be there right sir otherwise sir, threads will break if at all if you are there in dry areas the thread will not be very very strong it needs humidity for its strength if that is the case we are locating cotton industries along the humid provinces once you know the climatic divisions of india certainly speaking i can understand normally it is almost located along humid right sir if that is the case what are the location normally i have along humid locations in general, one, you are there along the west coast. Right, sir, you are there along the west coast. West coast is one of the humid regions in India, where geographically speaking or climatically speaking, it is very, very conducive for cotton production as such. And number two, when I talk about the quality of this textile industries or cotton textile industries, the input what we need is long staple cotton, sir. Cotton comes with different types or different length of its staple. You call it as a short staple. You call it as a medium staple. And you call it as a long staple. India had long staple cotton cultivated area. But after partition, these long staple cotton cultivated area went with Pakistan. If that is the case, the quality raw material was almost a limitation for this industry, sir. So, as the case, port orientation almost supplemented this import of this long staple cotton. What is this short, medium and long staple? It is nothing but the length of the fiber. If at all, if I talk about the cotton fiber, if the length of the fiber is more than 3 centimeter, you call it as a long staple. More than 3 centimeter. It is called as long staple, sir. Less than 2.5 centimeter, you called as short. Rationality says what is medium? What is medium? Between 2.5 to 3 centimeters of its length, you call it as a medium staple <coughs> cotton. So, what is grown in India is this medium and short. Long is very, very less grown in India. Apart from that, when I talk about the locational aspect of Maharashtra, yes, it is located along the black soil in the interland. Apart from the black soil, you have the availability of cheap labor. Entire India, this factor almost works. Cheap power, ready market, Mumbai itself is one of the greatest market for it. well connected road and rail network and obviously speaking the so called geographical or industrial inertia if i remember 1854 the very first successful cotton textile industries was set up in maharashtra by the river right sir if that is the case fine what was set at the earth means first stage it was a failure and when i talk about 1854 set up it was successful if that is the case that also acts as that sorry act as that industrial inertia 
Now, these are some of the factors which justifies the location of cotton industries in Maharashtra, sir. Similarly, when I talk about Gujarat, Gujarat is the second largest producer of cotton textile. Almost the locational aspect of Gujarat is very, very near to that of Maharashtra. But only one difference is there when I talk about the site or the cost of land is considerably cheaper than Mumbai when you are comparing with Ahmedabad. All other factors is applicable. One extra factor why we find the industrial location in Ahmedabad, apart from the others, the site of cost, sorry, the cost of site is comparatively less. And adding a fact about Tamil Nadu, when I talk about yarn production, sir, when I talk about yarn production, Tamil Nadu, is the largest yarn producing state in India. 44 production of yarn is produced in Coimbatore. Almost the belt of Coimbatore. And we also know that as we were always says, it means Coimbatore is also called as Manchester of the South. Other centers already we have taken. Madhya Pradesh, at least we have a place like Indore. Uttar Pradesh, we have Kanpur and Shahjavan. West Bengal, Murshidabad and Kolkata are the locations where we have in West Bengal. These are some of the places where we have concentrated a location of cotton industries. Right, sir. Now, the locational aspect of cotton industries we have seen. Another industries, which is an agro-based industries. Second such industry, you call it as jute industry, sir jute industry. Now some of the basic facts about jute and the jute products. Just to tell you that India is the largest producer of jute in the world. Sir. India is very closely followed by Bangladesh and by China. These are the three, it means the three large producers of jute in the world. Dominated by India, India is the largest producer of jute. And when I talk about jute textile industries, jute textile industries is the second most important textile industry or second largest textile industry next only to cotton industry. You call it the second largest textile industry. Next only to cotton industry or cotton textile industry. Now, when I talk about jute, often jute is referred as a golden fiber, sir. This is how jute is normally referred as. The reason why we refer jute as a golden fiber in the sense, as you know, it is natural, it is renewable, it is biodegradable and eco-friendly. The advantage of jute is plenty. Today, even when I talk about water use efficiency, sir, water use efficiency, where we are trying to minimize the loss of water in irrigation and others. What we generally find, the use of jute, we retain the water to the maximum capacity. Put it very simple, jute is one thing which almost makes water use efficiency maximum. And whenever I talk about the cultivation of jute or the jute textile industry, one state becomes synonym with the jute, sir. That is West Bengal. It becomes synonym with West Plains jute cultivation. Just to tell you, entire India, we have somewhere around 83 composite jute mills. Out of this 83 composite jute mills, 64 jute mills are there in West Bengal itself. Now, why West Bengal? That is a question, sir. Just to tell you, when I talk about the jute growing, the geographical condition for jute growing 
is very very similar to that of the cultivation of rice so whatever the condition needed for rice cultivation the same condition is needed for jute cultivation what are the condition needed for rice cultivation temperature it is a warm crop that we know right sir it means warm temperature is needed apart from warm temperature we also know that the know that rice is water intense crop if that is the case flood irrigation is the most successful irrigation what we have right taking both the factors we are confining rice cultivation to a place where the precipitation is high and temperature is also high temperature should be high and precipitation should also be high right sir if that is the case again can i say these are normally located along warm and humid locations when i talk about warm and humid location along with the plains the choice is very very less right sir and one problem of jute industry also many problems are there when i talk about one problem of jute industries if at all if you are expanding the area under jute cultivation it can be done only at the cost of the rice cultivation only if you reduce the area of rice cultivation you can actually increase the area under jute cultivation this is also one problem what it is associated with jute industries right sir but understandably when i talk about high temperature and high precipitation warm and humid along with plains right sir only few locations are there among the locations right west bengal is also one such location what we have and if you remember west bengal entire india when i talk about the season when rice is cultivated when exactly rice is cultivated it is cultivated only along or only which is coterminous with the advancing monsoon but when i talk about places like west bengal even in assam all three seasons almost <coughs> rice is cultivated wherever or whichever place in india which do not experience a distinct winter there all we have the cultivation of rice in all three cropping season right sir locally the names are different that also we have seen somewhere in the earlier classes right otherwise rest of india only one season it is devoted for rice cultivation right if that is the case again west bengal i have a place or west bengal is a place where the distinct winter is not aware all three crop crop is rice if that is the case the similar climatic condition can also aid jute cultivation in this state right sir now we'll talk about production and distribution of jute as i was saying first comes west bengal and 84 production 84 percentage of total jute production of country is from west bengal and even in west bengal it is not entire west bengal is concentrated with this jute textile production it is only a very narrow stretch along hugli river sir 64 kilometers in its length and 3 kilometers in its width very narrow stretch of land or very very narrow area we have which is devoted for this jute cultivation right sir if that is the case one thing is also there right if at all if i talk about this along hugli river which is the most preferred transport it is the riverine transport see there are different ways of transport we always go for rationalizing the cost of transport very short distance we prefer road network or roadways longer slightly greater a distance we prefer we prefer rail route more longer we prefer waterways always when i talk about the distance and the cost the most effective worldwide or let me call it as the cheapest mode is water sir most cheapest cost per kilometer if at all if i am just talking about with the distance and almost all it reduces with the increased distance sir now when i talk about such thing say like i am just talking about three mode of transport one let me call it as a road transport 
Number two, I call it as a rail transport. Number three, I call it as water base. Water base. When the distance is more, the best mode of transport will be water base. Sir. When the distance is less, the best mode of transport will be road route or road transport. Right, sir. And one type of transport is there which will never meet these lines. It is air, air ways or air transport. Right, sir. This is one rationality on which the cost per kilometer per ton per ton is calculated and whichever given the distance whichever mode is available that mode is selected. Understandably when I talk about jute or the industrial location of jute preferably it is located along the waterways that is the understanding along the Hooghly river. Locationally speaking, I said concentration of this jute is located along this belt along this river Hooghly. And when I talk about the reason for such concentration, we find that this is located along this Ganga Brahmaputra Delta. Not only this, entire, when I talk about the production as such, somewhere around 73% of jute production comes from this Ganga and Brahmaputra Delta region, particularly in West Bengal. And we were saying that it means a cheap water transport is another reason for such location. And when I talk about jute production, this is water intense production. So if that is the case, abundant water is needed. So as the case, wherever you have surplus water, these are the locations which is look selected for the jute industrial location. As already discussed, humid climate. Just to tell you, it needs the same geographic climate that is needed for rice cultivation. Same geographic climatic condition. And suddenly speaking, it also takes the advantage of Kolkata port, where import, if at all, if it is going for import of modern machinery or the export of finished products, both can be facilitated with the help of Kolkata port. And finally, which is applicable to entire India, cheap labor again. These are some of the factors which determined the locational aspect of jute industries in West Bengal. Sir. Now, apart from West Bengal, the other places where we have the production of jute and jute textile industries, the distant second, we have the state of Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh is the second largest producer and manufacturing manufacturer of jute textiles. But just to tell you that only 10% of the entire production is almost contributed by Andhra Pradesh. Some of the places in Andhra Pradesh which is known for jute cultivation, Guntur, Vaisag, <coughs> Nalimarla, Eluru, Ongol, etc. Sorry? Urisa? That's what I'm telling you. This less production is more of a choice. Only thing is that if at all if you're going for more of production means, sorry, cultivation as such, it has to be at the cost of rice cultivation. That is the reason most of the states they discourage jute cultivation. Right, sir. Other places, the same places what we have taken for textile, here also it holds good. Kanpur and Shah Jawan. Apart from Uttar Pradesh and Andhra Pradesh, other states where we have such production, it is almost the extension or those places which is very, very near to West Bengal. Bihar, Assam, Chhattisgarh and even parts of Orissa.
the same map or taking in map sorry same names taking in map when i talk about jute industries sir west bengal is concentrated entire west bengal along this hooghly river belt along hooghly river belt where as i was saying that somewhere around 84 percentage of the total production is accounting for apart from that we have locations in bihar orissa chatisgarh even assam we have some productions and uttar pradesh these are the places where we have production of jute andhra pradesh the second place which accounts somewhere around 10 percentage of the total production and so on sir these are some of the places let me repeat it first comes west bengal then it is followed by andhra pradesh and some of the sporadic locations we have in orissa chatisgarh bihar uttar pradesh assam etc Right, sir. Two industries we have seen: one, cotton, and number two, textile industries. The third, agro-based industry in India. Let me talk about the sugar industries. Now, some of the basic facts about sugar industry. Sugar industry is the second largest agro-based industry in India, next only to cotton. Please don't confuse yourself when I talk about jute. Jute is the second largest textile or production or textile industry in India, next only to cotton. Here it is a different category. I am just calling it as second agro-based industry or second largest agro-based industry. cotton is the largest agro based industry cotton is the largest textile industry also right sir let me clarify it jute is the second largest textile industry whereas sugar industry is the second largest agro based industry now entire world india is the second largest producer of sugar sir just following brazil Brazil is the largest producer of sugar India is the second largest producer of sugar See one more data says if at all good jagri good and kansari sugars if at all if it is added then India becomes number 1 in sugar production right sir here i am just talking only about the refined sugars right i am not talking about jagri i am not talking about this kansari <coughs> local sugars right or it means the primitive sugar productions also we have that is not added only the formal sugar production by mills it is added sir going by this fact india is the second largest producer and when i talk about the employment in mills somewhere around 4 lakh employment it gives in mill and it also supports somewhere around 2.5 crore sugar cane growers in the world sorry in india sir 2.5 crore farmers it supports and some of the other factor says this is a weight losing raw material now why i call it as a weight losing raw material in the sense if you crush 100 tons of sugar sir 100 tons of sorry sugar cane right what is the output what we get is only 10 to 12 tons of sugar right sir that is again certainly speaking where these industries has to be located is the rational outcome where very near to the raw material itself right it is not only this factor when i talk about the storage and transportation of sugar cane there also we have problem 
when i talk about the storage in long terms the sucrose content will reduce if at all if you are just transporting it for a longer distance this sugar cane will become dry as soon as possible if that is the case right whenever you harvest or you cut the canes as such then and there it has to be crushed that is the understanding right to add a few points as i was saying if stored for a long time as i was suggesting sucrose content will be lost gradually sir slowly steadily more you store it it will start losing its sucrose content similarly when i talk about transportation if the transportation cost itself is high transportation cost is very very high and it becomes dry during such transport also and if that is the case sir this is undoubtedly a raw material oriented industry right sir further taking it now when i talk about some of the states with the sugar cane production or sugar production as such few states or two states sir only two states when i talk about two states they become synonym with the sugar cane production as well as sugar production one is maharashtra and another is uttar pradesh right recent fact says entire approximately when i talk about the sugar production in india 30 million metric ton i think so 30 million metric ton is what the total production of sugar in india is the total production in india among this 30 million metric ton approximately 10 million metric ton is now last year it is produced by maharashtra very closely it is followed by 9.3 million metric ton is by uttar pradesh approximately now what happens every year either maharashtra will be a leading producer or uttar pradesh will be a leading producer that we cannot say every year there is a fluctuation going by the last year's data maharashtra marginally it has almost eclipsed uttar pradesh right sir in sugar cane sorry in sugar production as such now one more analogy is also there generally maharashtra now both sugar cane and sugar production both it has stopped otherwise generally we have one analogy or one observation we have generally sugar cane production as such if i take uttar pradesh will be number 1 when i talk about sugar production it will be maharashtra reason is very simple when i talk about those sugar canes which is cultivated in northern plains of india versus the cane which is cultivated in peninsular india the sucrose content or the sugar content in this cane is substantially high if that is the case yield when you are crushing will be higher for those canes which is almost cultivated in peninsular part right so that also we will understand so going by that logic quality wise cane needs tropical conditions sir when i talk about tropical condition or tropical condition grown canes the quality of cane will be good now what we find in the sense entire sugar production in india two states itself they occupies somewhere around two two third of the production all other states almost put together they produce only one third of the other production sir or total production what are the states almost the second order of importance where i call it as states of medium production of sugar it is gujarat karnatak andhra pradesh and tamil nadu these are the other states where i have second in list major producer only two uttar pradesh and maharashtra followed by the medium producer i have gujarat karnatak andhra pradesh and tamil nadu earlier just to tell you this is a older information but just to tell you when i talk about maharashtra maharashtra itself produces somewhere around 30 to 33 percentage sir let me call it as 30 percentage itself uttar pradesh again somewhere around 30 percentage and the rest of the states and contribution also we have almost we are seeing it 
the third producer it is tamil nadu fourth it is followed by karnataka andhra pradesh and gujarat sir these are the states in order according to their share of sugar production in india Sir, I talk about the geographical condition which is needed for sugar cane. Rainfall, a moderate rainfall is needed, sir. Somewhere between 100 to 175 centimeters. Maybe what I call it as moist or subhumid type of a climate is needed. Is ideal for sugar cane production. Moist or subhumid. Similarly, you need warm conditions, sir. You need warm condition because we have an understanding. Tropically grown canes, the quality of this sugar cane is much higher than the canes which is grown in other areas. Globally speaking, only two areas sugar canes are grown: tropical condition and subtropical conditions. In general, the justifying word is warm conditions, sir. And very importantly, frost is injurious to sugarcane. If that is the case, sugarcane generally do not go with the place where you have extreme winters. And finally, when I talk about soil, you need a loamy or a fertile soil. Right, sir. Now, what are the geographical conditions needed for sugarcane cultivation? We have seen. Now, what we'll do? Wherever you have sugarcane cultivation, there we have located the industrial location of the place. Right. And we also discussed that when I talk about the nature of this cane, right? In India, two regions in general we have this cane cultivation. General classification, let me call it as the northern plains of India versus the peninsular part of India. Understanding says peninsular part of India in general they experience warm condition. I am talking about the year round average temperature. Right, sir. Peninsular India experiences warm condition. If that is the case, the quality of both or the characteristics of both these sugar canes differ from each other. Briefly, we will discuss about those differences that what we have between these canes which is cultivated in northern plains and the peninsular part of India. Right, sir, when I talk about the peninsular part of India, I am including those states of Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. When I talk about northern plains, primarily I am talking about Uttar Pradesh. Right, sir. Now, one, we know that peninsular India, almost it experienced tropical climate as the case. We also suggested that yield will be higher. Right, the sucrose content will be very high if that is the case. Certainly speaking, the yield what you get after crushing the sugar cane will be higher, sir. As I said, sucrose content is high in tropical variety. And when we talk about the practical constraint, all sugar cane which is harvested cannot be crushed at the same time. If that is the case, it means almost like a queue, this harvested sugar cane has to be stored. Now, when I talk about the crushing period, Suddenly speaking, when I talk about the storage, it also determines the crushing period as such. Now, when I talk about those crushing period of the northern plains, the canes which is cultivated in northern plains, the crushing period is very, very limited. It means this sugar cane has to be crushed within the said four months. Sir. Maximum, you can have four months, not beyond it. 
Right, sir. What is this four month? November to February. But when I talk about peninsular part of India, this crushing period can be extended anywhere till seven to eight months. If that is the case, you have a longer crushing period also. That is one advantage. And apart from other factors, when I talk about other factors, one, when I talk about the cooperative institutes or the cooperative organizations, cooperative sugar mills in the south is managed better. And when you talk about the installation of modern machineries, again, the peninsular part being very near to the port and other such reasons, Installation of modern machinery also holds good in the peninsular part. If that is the case, when I talk about sugarcane industry in India, the peninsular part of Indi means India, the sugarcane industries are well equipped when you are comparing it with the industries in the northern plains, sir. Some of the agro based industries we have seen, just to have a recap, we have seen three industries sir, cotton, jute and the sugarcane industry. Just <coughs> noting down the locational aspect of cotton industries, one thing we know cotton industries can, look, can be located at any place. It can be located near the raw material or it can be located near the market. Right, sir, because we know cotton is a pure raw material which neither gains weight nor loses weight, sir. Right, but still there are n number of factors which has determined the locational aspect of cotton industries that also we have seen. Right, when I talk about the jute industry, when I talk about jute industry, again, <coughs> Right, sir. When I talk about jute industries, some of the locational aspect of jute industries we have taken it. Right. And we have said that jute industry is located primarily in the state of West Bengal for its natural reasons. And one thing we find that here also it can be located anywhere between market and the raw material where it is almost it is sorry, the raw material where it is processed. Right. But still, when I talk about the initial or industrial inertia or the geographical inertia it almost it is getting oriented towards the raw material itself and finally we also talked about the location of sugarcane industries and we have concluded that sugarcane industries is primarily a raw material oriented, oriented industries for the simple reason the perishable nature of sugar and sugarcane this is the one we have taken and associated we said that given the fact that it is more of raw material oriented industries sir. Now these are some of the agro based industries what we are interested in, we have seen and with that we will also see some of the manufacturing industries sir. The locational aspect of manufacturing industries. Now again different types of manufacturing industries are there, before talking about the different types let us have an idea about those regions or the industrial regions in India, where you have the industrial clusters in India that we will have a look. Now when I talk about the major industrial regions in India. Totally we have 8 places where we have the concentrated location of industries. Like a region or a belt, these industries are located to this particular region, sir. Right. Approximately we will have an idea, what are they? One, we are there in this NCR, sir, National Capital Region. We are just talking about this 8 industrial or major industrial regions in India. Going by the geographical location, one you called as NCR. 
otherwise it is called as gurgaon name change it is called as gurugram gurugram delhi meerut region otherwise you can also call it as ncr national capital region see national capital region is different from national capital territory national capital territory is more of political when i talk about national capital region it is more of economic in nature right sir the second region industrial region you called as gujarat region one major region again a place where maximum number of industries are concentrated the third region you called as mumbai pune region you called as mumbai pune region almost again between mumbai and pune we have many clusters of industries fourth it is tamil nadu bangalore region five it is kollam tiruvananthapuram region kollam tiruvananthapuram or trivandrum six it is vaisak guntur region Seven, Chota Nagpur region. And eight, Hooghly Industrial Belt, West Bengal. These are the eight industrial locations in India. Let me repeat it. What we call it as National Capital Region, Gujarat Region, Mumbai Pune Region, Tamil Nadu Bangalore Region, Kollam Trivandrum Region, Vaisak Guntur, Chota Nagpur, and finally. Hooghly industrial region. These are the eight industrial regions of the country. See, industrial regions or country in divided into different categories. There are at least two categories. One as major and minor. There are seventeen minor industrial regions, but this minor we are not taking it. We are just concerned only about the major industrial locations. And whenever the questions are asked, these industrial locations are almost from this major industrial location. Others they don't ask. Right, sir. When I talk about Chota Nagpur, this is the place where iron and steel industries of India is located. Right, every region is known for one or two, sorry, one or more types of industries and its locations, sir. One by one, we'll see few of the industries. We'll see. First and foremost, we'll start with iron and steel industries, sir. And this will be the last industry. What we'll be seeing today. Right, some of the basic. facts about iron and steel industry before talking about the locational aspect first such industry or iron and steel industry in india is started in this place called as porto nova sir a place called as porto nova in the year 1830 this was the very first iron and steel industry that was set up in india again like cotton industries which was set in 1818 this also did not go good right in no time this was also closed porto nova locally called as parangi patai kadalur district sir appears as though it is in spain but it is in tamil nadu <laughs> right when i talk about the first iron and steel industries which was almost brought in modern lines with state of art first such modern iron and steel industry came in jamshedpur sir tata iron and steel company this was the first iron and steel industry was set up in modern lines tisco tata iron and steel company jamshedpur in the year 1907 sir and from 1907 when i talk about the other means other industries which is being set up iron and steel industry slowly steadily the same region started developing many other industries sir for example when i talk about the 
Indian Iron and Steel Industry or Indian Iron and Steel Company was set up in Burnpur, West Bengal in the year 1919. Now again, in 1923, one such iron and steel industry was set up in Karnataka, sir. It is called as Mysore Steel Works. In the place called as Badravati. First while name is Mysore Steel Works, but today it is called as Vishweshwaraya Steel Works, sir. It is called as Vishweshwaraya Steel Works. These are some of the heavy industries or iron and steel industries which was set up in India. Pre-independence, sir. Now, when I talk about post-independence, at least three major projects came in, sir. Three integrated steel projects came in. Right. In <coughs> three different states, it came in, sir. Almost everything was out of this second five-year plan. One, it came in Belai, sir. Belai, Chhattisgarh. Rorkela, Orissa, and Durgapur, West Bengal. Right, sir, these are the three iron and steel industries which was almost set up post independence during the second five year plan. And when I talk about 1783, this was the year when Steel Authority India Limited was set up, formed. And today when I talk about the Steel Authority India Limited, it is a Maharatna company, sir. There are different types of classification for public sector enterprises. Right. The most, when I talk about the the most performing company you call it as a Maharatna company. Maharatna or Navaratna? Okay. Right, sir. This is some of the introductory fact about this iron and steel industries. Almost from the very first iron and steel industry attempt which came in 1930 and so on. Now. When I talk about the locational factor of iron and steel industry, at least we have an idea as already we have discussed about this locational aspect. This is more of raw material oriented industry, sir. More of raw material oriented industry. For the simple fact, iron and steel industry is a weight losing industry, sorry. Okay, sir, yes. Is more of weight losing industry. Right, sir, both we have discussed. It uses very heavy, and this is a weight losing raw material. As the case, we always say that it is a raw material oriented industry. So, locationally speaking, wherever we have the raw material, the availability of raw material. Those are the places which is naturally selected for the location of such industries. Now, when I talk about the raw materials, the raw material is not only iron ore. Apart from iron ore, we also have coal as a very important input for iron and steel industry. Right, sir. So, if that is the case, wherever I have the availability of both, say, iron ore as well as coal, Somewhere midpoint, we are having the locational aspect. Right, sir. Now, if that is the case, I am taking both the case, availability of coal as well as availability of the iron ore. Given the possibilities or given both the factors, how many combinations are there when I talk about location? Either it can be located near to the coal field or it can be located near to the iron ore mine or at a place between area of coal and iron. Now, what we see in reality, the third is the most commonest one. So, it is placed at a place or it, the, sorry, the industry is located at a place where almost you have a equidistance or where you have the access of both very, very near to each other. Right, sir. And nowadays, when I talk about the modern setup or modern location, it is not that when I talk about the raw material as iron, always we are not going for iron ore. We are also using that 
recycled iron and scrap material. If that is the case, certainly speaking, only if coal is available, only if power is available, there also you can go for setting up of these industries. But certainly not in large scale, but in small scale, you can go for it. Right. What has in recent times changed the scenario is use of scrap as raw material. Not only that, agglomerations. Right. Almost the confluence of many other industries, related industries has also changed the locational aspect of these industries. But still, when I talk about the large scale setup of these industries, concentrated location of iron and steel industries, they we find at the place where both coal and iron is available. Now, if that is the case, when I talk about such locations where both iron as well as coal is available, primarily we are concentrated in this belt. We are concentrated in this belt. You can enlarge the circle also. This is the place where we are concentrated primarily. Right. Why? Because we know when I talk about iron ore, this region is known for its iron ore. Why? Because I understand this is majority part of exposed shield, sir. Some of the very prominent shield what we have here, Chota Nagpur Plateau, which is known for its iron ore reserves. Apart from Chota Nagpur Plateau, you also have Dandagarnaya Table Land or Bastar Plateau. Right, sir. You have Bastar Plateau and just in and around Chota Nagpur Plateau, you have number of other shields what we call it as Rajmahal Hills, Ramgad Hills, Garjat Hills, etc. including Hazaribagh Plateau. Right, sir. These are some of the places where you have the iron ore reserves. And just to tell you that these are the same place near to each other where you have a coal reserves, sir. The circle includes both iron ore as well as coal reserves. Put together, put together, you have both raw material 1 and raw material 2 and that is the reason why majority of iron ore industries is located in this region. When I talk about the concentrated iron ore region, concentrated location of iron ore, right. primarily it is in the state of Jharkhand. Primarily it is in the state of Jharkhand and those areas which is located very very near to Jharkhand. Right, sir. Now, when I talk about these locations, I said this, these are the places. When I talk about Jharkhand adjoining Orissa, we talk about Jharkhand, it is not only Jharkhand adjoining Bihar, we have West Bengal, we have Orissa, we have Chhattisgarh, we have these are the states which is adjoining Jharkhand. If that is the case, I can say that raw material is easily available to these states also. For example, if I am there in Jharkhand, I have at least Bokaro and Jamshedpur. If you are there in West Bengal, I have Durgapur. Right, sir. If you are there in Odisha, you have Rorkela. If you are there in Chhattisgarh, you have Bilai. So, these are the places where you find both iron ore and coal. But there are also other locations where we have iron ore, sorry, this is iron and steel industries as an exception. One of the exceptions, one. You are there in almost in a place called as Badravati, where you have this Vishweshwaraya steel, iron and steel industry. Earlier it was called as a Mysore steel, iron and steel industry. Right, sir. You have Vishakapatna. You have Vishakapatna. And you also have this exception now, very recently, after the formation of sale, you also have Salem Steel Authority. I mean, Salem, sorry, Salem Steel. Right, sir. Now, when I talk about the locational aspect on common lines, yes, this goes well within the logic. But when I talk about exceptions, we will understand why exactly the exception comes in. When I talk about Batravadi, sir, both are needed, what are needed, iron ore is needed. Apart from that, you also need coal. Iron ore we have, very near to Batravati, you have a place called as Kudre Muk. Chikmangalore, you have a place called as Kudre Muk or Baba Budan Hills. A place which is known for its iron ore reserves. If that is the case, iron ore we have, but the supply of power is not there. But when I talk about modern lines, now the supply of power is almost facilitated by a project called the Sharavati project. A power project, you have the availability of cheap power. 
now almost Batravati becomes no exception. Now when I talk about Vishakapatnam, Vishakapatnam is an exception because this is the only port, sorry, this is the only location which is port oriented in nature. It is port oriented in nature. When I talk about port oriented, it means two things it concentrates. One, exports of the finished goods as well as import of machineries, sir. Import of modern machineries. As well as export of finished goods, both are concentrated. Or I put this way, Vishagapatnam is the only location which is port oriented in nature among the major locations. Not only Marmagao, they are minor examples, not that of Vaisak. Now, when I talk about minor examples, there are many, sir, which is port oriented industries, iron and steel industries. One, in Maharashtra, you have a place called as Ratnagiri. Goa, you have Margova. And Karnataka, you have Mangalore. These are some of the minor centers which is port oriented in nature Ratnagiri, Margova, and Mangalore. See, I am talking about industrial locations. I am not talking about the place where iron ore is available. I am talking about the place of manufacturing. I am not talking about the place of lumbering. Right, sir. Fine. These are some of the locations where we have the location aspect of iron and steel industries, sir. Right, with this, I am just concluding today's class. Feel happy that it is concluded in two hours. Right, sir. Other examples or other types of industries, we will take it in the later classes, sir. We may, if I talk about agro-based industries, one or two more agro-based industries can be added. For example, paper industries, we have not discussed. Some very basic facts about paper industries, we will add it. Few other industries, we will add it. Then the next class, we will talk about the key natural resources also, sir. Thank you.